So could you start today by just sharing more about your developmental background and what led you so deeply into consciousness studies, what shaped your worldview, your spiritual perspectives, and what your beliefs are about the nature of reality? So however you want to unpack that, I, I, I would personally love to know more about Ray myself. Well, um, in order to go in depth into the, to responding to, to those series of questions, uh, we would be here all night. But um, what, what I'll be doing, I'll try to give you a two-minute a two uh, summary. Um, uh, first of all, I have an academic background. Uh, for those that live in California, people would recognize the University of California, Berkeley. Right. I went there for a PhD uh, in urban planning. Um, uh, before that, I had gone to Cornell for a master's degree. And um, so basically the last eight years of my life, I've had straight A's. While I was writing my dissertation, my ex-wife got a brain, brain aneurysm, <clears throat> and um, which uh, led her to become disabled. And I had to quit writing my dissertation and take two full-time jobs because now I had five mouths to feed. Wow. Um, and so uh, I was never able to finish the dissertation. But I had done, my goodness, uh, five years of, uh, of graduate work um, and, and all the requirements for a PhD, except the actual finishing the dissertation. And so um, I was uh, always an academic at heart and mind. And then later on, I went to law school, um, and I became um, uh, an attorney for the U.S. Department of Treasury, uh, uh, a tax attorney, which is the most boring uh, work uh, in the world that you can imagine. <laughs> and, and so fast forward, you know, 25 years later, uh, this was um, in 2012, uh, March of 2012. I was a total atheist. I had zero interest in any topics relating to consciousness, uh, the contact modalities, which I'll be defining later on, anything related to the paranormal. Uh, I thought that everyone involved in these topics were, were kooks. <laughs> and so um, on that day, um, I had my first of... Um, four years worth of paranormal experiences uh, that were pretty much nonstop. Wow. And it all started with um, an energy being, uh, being, energy being that appeared in my living room. Wow. Um, uh, and that was five feet away from me. And, um, and that uh, being came because my wife had been praying all night uh, for an angelic intervention uh, for our 15 year old dog who was totally paralyzed. And so she had just come from a Catholic retreat where all she did was pray. So when I told her what had just happened, that I already talked to our vet and the vet was going to be euthanizing her tomorrow, she obviously became, you know, very uh, uh, traumatized by it. And she just continued what she was doing in the retreat was to pray all night. And me as a good atheist, I said, do all the praying you want. Tomorrow we're going to put her to sleep. And so the next morning we woke up, the dog was still paralyzed. She went to carry the dog downstairs to see if she can go to the bathroom. And I w went back to bed. And then all of a sudden, I hear her screaming, screaming, right, right, right. And I was like, holy crap, you know, 6.30 in the morning, uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, wake me up. And so she finally went upstairs and hauled me out of bed, physically grabbed me. And she wouldn't tell me what it was. She said, you need to see this. You need to see this. I said, what is it? You need to see it. She wouldn't tell me what it was. Then so we're going down the stairs. And she was very quickly going down the stairs, so I followed her. And then, what I'm about to tell you happened instantaneously, super quick, okay? Uh, less time than what I'm about to tell you. All of a sudden, she disappears in front of me. The dog disappears in front of me. I had tunnel vision. I could only see, like, what was directly right in front of me. Everything all around was all dark, okay? And it was focused into this energy being, and let me describe it to you. It was uh, not a humanoid in, uh, in, in its shape. It was, um, I, mean, I mean, it was like two and a half feet wide by a foot and a half in, in width, floating four feet from the ground. It had numerous colors, um, like, uh, like a plasma energy field, except it was tons of colors. It was semi-transparent. I could see the sofa behind it and the wall behind it. And then the most important part was that this intelligence totally controlled my consciousness. Okay. Totally controlled it. I didn't care that my wife disappeared, the dog disappeared. I didn't care that I was watching this being in front of me. I then looked at it, squinted my eyes, and then I waved my hand and I said, Oh, this is bullshit. This is what you got me up for for this junk, you know? 
I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> so I turned around, walked up the stairs, put my hands on my chest like this, and boom, I was knocked out. An hour later, when I woke up, and I know it was an hour because when I ran downstairs, I looked at the clock, and it was 7 o'clock. So an hour later, when I woke up, I was now fully conscious. It was like I was put into a spell. So I ran down the stairs, and all of a sudden, my wife reappears. She looks down. The dog is running around the entire living room, fully healed. And my wife is saying, hallelujah, hallelujah, the angels cured her, the angels cured her. And it was like an atom bomb blew up in my brain. It was like, it was like my whole world was shattered. And then I asked her, you know, after I composed myself, where were you? Look at the time, it's 7 o'clock. You know, you disappeared in front of me at 6 o'clock. She goes, I didn't go anywhere. And it wasn't until six months later I found out because my wife began praying at night, and these huge UFOs would appear. And so we finally called this organization called MUFON that investigates UFO uh, cases. And then the lady was a retired school teacher. Her husband was a retired scientist at the National Hurricane Center here in Miami. So she said, what your wife had is, is called missing time. And then she explained a little bit about it. I had no idea what this was, you know. And so, uh, but my wife, she swears to this day that, you know, she didn't go anywhere, you know. Yeah. But I, but I know she was gone for for an hour, and so anyway, um, I I told her, "Where were you? Where were you?" She says, "I didn't go anywhere." What are you talking about? I didn't go anywhere. I says, "Yes, you did. Look at the time." And so then later on, she described what she saw. She saw something different. She saw more of a physical object, like an upside down U, okay, the letter U, but it was a physical object, and it was silverish in color, and was phasing in and out of reality. And and she even uh, called it a, um, a una nave. A nave in Spanish means like a craft. It was like a little craft, and and that's those were her words, not mine. And so I had no idea that this was UFO related. I thought it was paranormal related. So I drew what I saw. I said I didn't see that, you know. And I said, when did you see that? I said, when you were gone, you know. So it was just a disjointed conversation because right. um, she was taken outside of space time. My my consciousness was totally controlled. Uh, there was an hour gap there. Who knows? Maybe she she was there, but I didn't see her because I had that tunnel vision. And my mind was completely controlled. And um, and so anyway, after that, my wife would pray at night, and uh, these huge UFOs would appear. Uh, one time she uh, she described to me, and then she drew it out, and, and she drew out the Goodyear blimp with colors on the edges. Okay. I said, oh, my angels came and visited me last night. They came in a beautiful angelic craft. It has stained glass windows in it, just like our church, you know. Because <laughs> still to this day, she sees everything from the Catholic lens, you know. Yeah. Um, and which eventually led to our divorce, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oops. <laughs> right, right now we're going through that, you know. And uh, but but anyway, it's because there's two different worldviews. You know? Yeah. I'm I'm looking at it from an academic intellectual perspective. And she is from a pure, purely religious perspective. And what I'm doing is like sacrilegious stuff, you know, uh, to her. Right. So, um, and so, um, but anyway, getting back to the initial story, she drew it out, what she saw, and it looked like a Goodyear blimp with like rainbow colors on the edges. Um, and so I said, what you saw was a UFO. She says, no, it wasn't. You know, it was my angels. And because you're an atheist, you wouldn't understand, you know. Yeah. And so um, she then you know, stories, I would hear stories of her relatives. When she went to Mexico, she was there a whole month. And it was all these UFOs that they had seen with her. And then um, um, and then later on, six months after that initial experience, I was waiting for a friend of mine to, um, uh, to come uh, give me his parking tickets. I was going to do a motion to consolidate. It was a favor for a friend. And so... Uh, he finally comes by, Ray, I got the parking tickets. He said, where are you at? He says, I'm real close by. Okay, I'll wait for you outside. So I'm waiting for him, and he doesn't show up, and he doesn't show up. And so all of a sudden, I remembered that the day before, I'd watched a video of this guy named Prophet Yahweh, where he would be talking to this intelligence, and this UFO would appear in the middle of the daylight, and he had a camcorder. It was like a little tiny speck, you know, that would appear in the sky. And I remembered that my wife had been calling down all those UFOs, and so, to me, it was like killing time. Oh, oh, what the hell? Let's give it a try, you know? And in the very beginning, I wasn't sincere at all. But after 15 minutes, I was like super sincere. 
I want to give them my thanks, my love for healing our dog, who's like our relative, was my my first daughter, you know. Yeah. And um, and so uh, towards the end, it was very very emotional, very very sincere, showing a lot of love. And then after 15 minutes, I said to myself, "What a freaking asshole! Here I am calling down a UFO. I'm going crazy. I need to stop this stuff because I'm going down the rabbit hole, you know." Yeah. And as soon as I had that thought. Right on top of my next door neighbor's house was this huge object the size of a small football stadium. Wow. Like less less than 30 feet away from me, okay? And uh, I won't give you all the details, but basically, um, uh, I heard my daughter's voice. I never heard a telepathic communication before. So I thought that my daughter was next to me, so I turned around. I'm looking for her. She wasn't there, but it was my daughter's voice giving me instructions, saying, Daddy, you and Mommy have seen UFOs. Next time you see one, you call me, Daddy. Don't forget, don't forget. I never said that to that to my daughter. I never mentioned these things to her. My wife never mentioned these things to her. What what I realized later on was that this intelligence has the ability to upload your memory banks, your Akashic records, whatever, to extract that information and then to break it into a conversation and then download it back to you. Okay. Uh-huh. It's like it's like the Akashic records. So yeah. it goes into the whole history of Ray Hernandez as being stored somewhere, you know brings down what they want, reprograms it, and sends it back, okay? Then all of a sudden, my, in my mind, I was like, my daughter wants to see this. My daughter wants to see this. So I'm running out, and I'm yelling at her to come out, so she comes out. And I'll skip those conversations that my daughter and I had. She was looking at it 30 feet away. I could have gotten a rock and hit the bottom of this object. And it was like 100 meters, a football f- a field uh, tall, uh, by 100 meter, uh, 600 meters in depth. Very, very detailed what we were watching. It wasn't physical. It was hundreds and hundreds of oblong streaks of light that formed like the whole shell of an object. And inside was all this white plasma swirling around, and it was transparent. Okay, you can mm. see the clouds. It was a totally cloudy uh, night, so you could see the clouds behind it. And then all of a sudden, my friend comes with his wife and their 17-year-old daughter. So they leave the car right in the middle of the cul-de-sac, and they run to us. They Ray, what the hell is that? I said, you know damn well what it is. And he goes, uh, it can't be, it can't be. So then he and his wife begin to try to explain it away, okay? For after like two minutes of listening to those crazy cockamamie explanations, I busted out laughing, okay? Because I didn't tell him that I called it down. And they <laughs> and he, Yeah. Yeah. Minor detail. <laughs> yeah, too, too much of a sensory overload for them, you know? And I didn't tell them all of the paranormal stuff that's going on with my wife and I, right? Yeah. And, um, and so... What I, again, I communicated with this intelligence. And as, and uh, can I cuss here? I can say a little cuss word here and there. And... Yeah, you swear whatever. Say whatever you want. Speak oh, from yeah. your heart. Because I want to tell you exactly what I, what I thought, okay? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm all, all about the real deal, baby. Okay, this is what I said verbatim. I, I communicated with my mind, not, you know, with my, with, with my lips, okay? <laughs> with my mind, I said... You better come up with some better bullshit than this because my friends don't believe you. <laughs> okay? Instantaneously, what I was watching totally disappeared and immediately replaced by a totally different object. Now it wasn't now it wasn't these oblong streaks of light that was huge, okay? Now it was much, much more lower to the ground, much more concentrated, and it was these huge orbs. Uh, I would say the size is like half of a Volkswagen. Uh, uh-huh. our car, the size of it. And they were all blinking on and off like this. Yeah. We're, to- we're talking about like 50 to 100 of them like this, on and off, on and off, blinking off. And then they would take turns powering up to like the size of the moon. You know how the moon sometimes gets uh, 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 super large? Yeah. It would be going like this, and then they would go down, and then they would continue blinking on and off. And then another one would do the same thing, okay? And that was throughout the whole area. Uh uh-huh. And and then my friends, all of a sudden, they stopped trying to explain away because this was not anything close to mad made, okay? Yeah. And then after like 10 minutes later, they said, oh, Ray, we got to go. You know, we have work. Uh, we own our businesses. We got work to do. I said, oh, don't worry. I'll do that motion to consolidate. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> and logically, you would have thought and told them, what are you, freaking crazy, man? You're li- watching a once-in-a-lifetime experience and you got to go? Yeah. And, you know? <laughs> It's like, you know, it doesn't make sense, you know? No, but yeah. what, what I realized later was that this intelligence conveyed to them, look, 
you we gave him a witness so he wouldn't think that he was crazy you know yeah we gave him his daughter so he's got a family re a relative to witness it he has other uh, people that witnessed it as well so it's not like I'm going crazy, okay? Right. All five of us can't be going crazy at the same time, okay? No. So, okay, your job is done. Bye-bye, you know? Yeah. And then they left, okay? The next door, the neighbor, while we were all there, he put on the light and he was looking at us, okay? Now, the logical thing to do is, like, go to his house, knock on his door, tear the door down. Pablo, look what the hell is on top of your roof, you know? And him, from his perspective, he saw five people, including his next door neighbor and his daughter, who was 10 years old, just staring at uh, the top of his roof like with our mouths open night. <laughs> you know, the logical thing would for him to come out, right? Yeah. Or for me to knock on his door. That never took place. He was looking at us, right? Why would we be like looking right on top of his roof, roof with our mouths open? You know, <laughs> it's not logical. What he did is not logical because I didn't make a response. Okay. Yeah. But this is people have to understand that you're dealing with an intelligence that totally can get into your mind, Paul's mind, my mind, able to read your mind 110%, can uh, uh, picture images. These are holograms that yeah. you're watching. Mm -hmm. These are holographic projections. Just yeah. like the, the different beings that people are seeing. Yeah. In our book, Beyond UFOs, I'm jumping a little ahead here, but in our book, Beyond UFOs, this is a five-year academic research study, okay? We were able to document tens of thousands of different different types of beings, okay, that people were experiencing, okay? And like, just for example, the human-looking being. Some were 20 feet tall, some were 2 feet tall. Some had suits, some had uniforms, all different colors. Some had blonde hair, uh, blue eyes, some, some were African features, some were Asian features. I mean, you name it, this is just for the human-looking beings, okay? Yeah. And then there was a whole bunch of other categories, okay? So what these are, these are projections okay and most of the time people see them for less than 15 seconds yeah sometimes 30 seconds rarely more than a minute okay so are these tens of thousands of different beings physical beings interacting with us for less than a minute are they coming from tens of thousands of physical planets or is this something a little bit more complicated okay what i realized not only from my experiences but interviewing thousands of experiencers was that the, this, these experiences are similar 